Inside the 18, I'm Michael Madsen, live from my dad's office in San Diego, California. So you kind of moved. <laughs> kind of moved. I'm migrating, slowly migrating up the coast back to Los Angeles. I will be back in Los Angeles okay. this weekend. I know that for a fact because I have a session on Saturday. So for, for, for sure, if Andre, if you're listening, your son Luca will be getting his session this weekend. I promise you I will not be in this office in San Diego. With me is 99 World Cup winner Saskia Weber. And because we have a Jersey quotient quota that we just have to fill every all episode, <laughs> all the time, we got AC Horson's goalkeeper, Michael Lansing, joining us all the way from Denmark. What is up, dude? What's going on? <laughs> Love it. Look, jerseys everywhere. That's <laughs> true. It's, it's pretty insane. I mean, we, we were joking about it, but, like, I feel like in every – it might, might be in every country in the world. There might be some sort of New Jersey connection when it comes to soccer. Like it's, it's absolutely crazy. Like I know that there's been other Jersey goalkeepers that have gone over, over to Europe and, uh, and, and made a name for themselves over there. Um, I can think of a, of a, of a young man, you know, that spent some time at Manchester United and at Everton, <laughs> who's a Jersey, who's a Jersey legend. Uh, there's, there's been a lot of guys. So you're in, you're in great company, Mike. So all you have to do is live up to Tim Howard. That's all you got to do. And, uh, and you'll be fine. Small shoes to fill. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, speaking of uh, shoes to fill and uh, small, that is a describing me when I play in the game because I am not able to close a lot of space because of my tiny frame, but I try to do the best job I can do. And that is today's topic, closing space and turning into a shot. The reason this topic came to be is because I was watching tape of Mike. And, and Mike, do you guys like to go in by Michael or Mike? Because people always ask me that too. You can, you can call me Mike. Okay. Um, is uh, because honestly, dude, you're amazing at closing space down. Like you're really, really good at it. And you're very good at turning into a shot and, and being able to, you know, deflect that ball in, into the right area. So I thought like what better topic to talk to you about than, uh, than closing space uh, since you're incredible at it, dude. So just giving you a pat on the back for that. I'm humbled by that. And <laughs> I honestly don't think those are my strengths. So that's uh, that's really nice to hear. <laughs> well, whoever put your highlight package together def definitely thought that was your strength. So, um, were these were, were uh, these college tapes? <laughs> no, these were not. These were pro tapes. Who put this together? I need to see this. <laughs> I, I I haven't seen these. Where did you see these? Oh yeah, Y Scout. Oh. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I haven't gotta, seen them. Yeah, you got to go on your Y Scout profile. Did you just, uh, I am going to interrupt and say, did you just see this come over that um, Orlando has to pull out of the Challenge Cup? No. Because they have 15 COVID cases. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Sorry to oh. interrupt. But that oh, just my came, gosh. That just came out. Oof, that is Oof. a uh, that is that is a difficult thing. Well, well, before we go, well, into we'll the discuss topic, it later. But wow. no, I mean, before we get into the topic, let's talk about uh, let's talk about what, what's going on with Michael over there because you guys yeah, uh, re re resumed at the Danish Super League. You guys resumed uh, your your season. How's how's that going out? What is that experience like with no fans there? Um, are you guys um, is it weird? It was pretty. It was pretty wild. We had we had one match um, before this whole break um, where we had no fans. Uh, it was actually at FC Co. We won one nil. Um, it was, I mean, this stadium has, I don't know, 50,000 seats or something, 40,000, something around there. Uh, and it was just silent. Like they didn't put in any of the sounds for, you know, the fans and things like that. It's gotta be uh, so weird. It was really eerie. It felt like a training match. Um, yeah. Our coach is very loud, so we could hear him. Um, <laughs> and normally you can't. <laughs> he's kind of he's kind of known around he's known around Denmark uh, for being heard in very loud matches. So he's he's a loud guy. Um, but uh, it was super eerie. And then we had the break, and it was almost almost two months without without anything. Um, so I actually got to go home back to New Jersey um, and be with my family and stuff, and then come back. We had two and a half weeks of training and then hop right into games again. Did you have to go into um, quarantine when you flew back? No, not when I flew back to Denmark. But okay. when I flew back to the States, I had to quarantine for 14 days. So I wasn't in contact with anyone. Yeah. Um, not well, even my family. Welcome to my, my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, Husky had a I period stayed. with the dogs. The dogs and her, they were uh, they were best friends. Oh, they all the time. Oh, they might be barking soon. Uh, yeah. Have you been Have you been traveling during this? To the grocery store. Oh, okay. I was talking <laughs> about like the quarantine. No, I, I've been I've been in my little zone here. Uh, Michael ran away and went to Palm Desert. <laughs> ran away and went to Palm Desert. <laughs> But now there's been no place to go, nothing to do. All our fields are closed um, here in, in like LA, like, you know, UCLA field, like all the high school fields. So no club, no nothing, no training, um, just literally to the store and back going yeah. crazy. But um, what, is, what is the fall season looking like? Well, as of right, you know, as of right now, we're, there's going to be a fall season. Um, it's, I think we're coming back in August. Fingers crossed, and um, we'll stick to um, just our our schedule, like our local schedule, just like Stanford and stuff like that. We won't travel like we were traveling to Boston and stuff. That I think that's out. Um, mm -hmm. But everything's constantly changing. I mean, that's just coming over the thing with Orlando is like, you know, like a lot of people are saying sports are coming back too fast, and there's there's an indication of it. like I'm just I'm sitting here just waiting I don't know what's gonna happen I'm waiting for another shoe to drop in a sense and say well no nope. so hopefully fingers crossed we have everything in place um you know yeah I mean I can't do I can't like if you're doing a session and stuff I can't I can't do sessions around here yeah, I mean it's it's a little bit different in in, in different locations, um, yeah. you know, which which makes it which makes it difficult. Like where Omar lives, that he's allowed to go mm -hmm. and run sessions as long as it's not on a soccer field. He can use public parks. Um, I noticed but, that. Yeah, I was yeah. wondering yeah, yeah. what the quality of the pitch that he was using. I was like, <laughs> this is this is not Omar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and here I can't do any of it. Like where I am. No. no. No, I mean, I'm right Gro here in like Beverly Hills and this whole area, forget it. Grocery store and back. Grocery store and back. Yes. Well, all right. Well, uh, on, so, that, on that on positive that on, on a happy <laughs> note. And look, maybe, you're, maybe we're not allowed, going to be allowed to close space anymore. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, I never thought about that with social distancing. You have to stop six, six feet away. So. I never Might thought about that. <laughs> this actually oh, might be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say in uh, like in training and everything where we were initially allowed to, you know, be body to body. If you get into a tackle or whatever, um, you know, spit on your gloves, throw back, whatever. Um, they weren't allowed to touch the ball or head the ball at first. And then once we stepped off the pitch, you had to be two meters away from each other. Yeah. So it was like it was really odd. It's like on the on the pitch, you're, you're swapping sweat and, you know, you're, yeah, I mean, time. you're really close. Uh, you're in contact with other people. And then when you get off the pitch, you have to stay two meters. It just didn't make that much sense. But, uh, uh, you know, I rules. think, I mean, there's, there's only so, oh, much, so much you can do. Um, but I, I love your idea about like, well, maybe if you do have to keep social distance, maybe some of these goalkeepers are going to learn not to how, to how to overrun the ball <laughs> and are going to actually true. be able to hold position and get set on, yeah. on, on a closing in shot. So getting back to kind of this topic, Mike, like what kind of does closing space mean? Um, giving the attacker um, less of an angle of the goal, less of an opportunity to score, I think. Uh, just closing the angle closing their view of the goal uh, and kind of making myself as, as big as I can. Um, I just read, uh, I'll have to send you over this uh, Twitter thread. Um, maybe you've seen it. I don't know. Um, but it was just about all the one-on-ones that were scored and saved in the English Premier League. And it talks about when to, um, you know, attack and spread, when to attack and block, when to, um, commit and go down to your hands. Um, and I just thought that was really interesting. I'll have to send that over to you. Yeah, but, sure. um, yeah, go ahead. No, def definitely. I mean, I think that, uh, I think that's something that's actually really beneficial for especially a lot of young goalkeepers to see, because we've talked about it on this show so many times how young goalkeepers 
utilize the same technique over and over again in different scenarios without recognizing when to use it. They're just kind of, it's kind of, which is okay. I mean, look, you're learning and you're experimenting and all that. But um, personally, like, I, I think, you know, one of the reasons why a lot of goalkeepers, you know, overrun the ball is because they see goalkeepers coming out at the professional level. They don't recognize that they're actually slowing down as they're approaching. And they just see these, these, these players sprinting at the ball. What, what do you think, Sask? I think a lot of times you see young kids overrun the ball. It's because they're too late. So okay. they're, um, they're, they're, they're trying to make up that space. They're like, oh, I should have closed space. And you see a kid, they're coming, coming, coming. And that, that ball, that, that, that attacker already has the ball at their feet. And so, you know, you've got to travel when that ball's in no man's land. You've got to travel during the through ball while the through ball is getting there, during the long touch, when the ball's away from them and they can't strike it. If you're coming while they're under control of that ball, they're just waiting for you and baiting you. And a lot of kids, that's like, it's two mistakes. One, you didn't come on time. Two, you're coming and you're not slowing down or something. Um, and, and, you know, there's a lot of different factors in that. One, if, if, you, do, if you slow down too late, you're too close. So, you know, you're, you're kind of sold in that, regard anyway you can't really do much and and if you're coming and the, the ball's at their feet they're they're just going to slide by you because yeah. if they're under control of the ball as you're moving to close the space you should have closed already that ball your momentum's going that way that ball's going that way and unless they hit you with the ball it's probably going to be that. yeah you know and i think you know that was one of the one of the things is that like when I want a lot of goalkeepers to understand that there's a difference between gaining ground, like trying to cover ground to like Michael, like you were talking about, like you will improve your angle to make yourself as big as possible mm -hmm. and make the goal as small as possible and running actually at the player. And I, I think, I think that's one of the mistakes, Mike, that, that I, that a lot of young goalkeepers think is they think that running at the ball is the same as gaining ground. And why, and why is that different? Um, well, you have to be strategic in what your in your approach to the ball. If if you got a striker bearing down at you, uh, and like Sasko was saying, uh, if you're just sprinting at him, um, the guy's just going to take a touch by you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're not under control. Uh, I think you have to be in charge of the situation. You have to control uh, yourself. Um, you know, take space in, in those big touches. And then once the striker looks up at, at you, you kind of just have to, you know, hold your ground, um, you know, not give them anything. And then, um, you know, kind of force them into a mistake. Um, but you have to keep your balance. You have to, you know, know when to slow down. I kind of always think about like fast approach, slow arrival. Um, yeah. You know, when you're about to make a save, you don't want to be like moving at the speed of light. You need to be kind of in control and um, be balanced. Um, so yeah, you can't be running around with your head cut off. Now, see, so, so now, Sask, is that something that you would you rather a young goalkeeper have that type of attitude of being like running full out at a player? Or would you rather them be more passive? Like if you had to choose in regards to like, because they're going to learn if you keep, if they keep running at the ball, they're going to eventually learn that they're, you know, that, that players are going to take a touch and they're going to go around them. Um, but the passive player, like it's much more difficult to teach them to that, you know, that kind of that oomph. I don't know why I'm well, if you this. have If you have a young player that, that wants, that understands and realizes that they, they need to come out. To, yeah. to close space and to close the angle and, and to make it more difficult. That's a good place to start. Um, if you have somebody that's stuck and that doesn't understand, doesn't understand they're supposed to do it, um, is passive, well, now they're just keeping the goal like as wide as it can possibly be, and now they're going to get scored on anyway. I would rather work with the person that understands they're supposed to do it, even though they're doing it wrong, because now, like, they have that instinct, they understand, so now I can work on timing, now you can work on, um, um, like you said, like, explode, but then slow it down, like, be under control, M you know, manipulate the situation for yourself, make it as hard. You, if you already have the mentality that you know you're supposed to go, that's a good place to start. Yeah, I, I think one of the, you know, we'll go. Because then, then you know the kid's semi-reading the game, even if they're late, 
they're reading the game. Even if they made the mistake and they're coming, off, they, they, they're coming off their line too late, at least they know they were supposed to. We can start from there. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I think one of, the, one of the issues a lot of times, I think, is that a lot of goalkeepers, they, they come and then they kind of like, they're like, okay, well, I've done my, jo- I've done my job. You know, and they're like, well, I've, I've come out. I've cut it because what's the coach always saying? Come out, come out, come out. So, like, I came out. Wait, yeah, but if somebody's already said now? come out to you, you're too late. It's too late. <laughs> you're too late. Yeah. <laughs> you're too yeah. late. If, yeah. I, if I yell or your coach yells come out, and you're already too late. Like, <laughs> no, I, I, I want to hear in Denmark, like, I want to hear in Denmark now, like, if, 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 if Michael's coach is so loud, if he can, like, if you can, like, hear him in the stadium, like, telling the goalkeeper, like, to come out. And I was like, the no, he, like, he's never out. said that. He's never said that. I actually got my red card on coming out, so. <laughs> I'm glad you really? I'm glad you're oh, yeah. I've taken, I've taken wow. a couple people down. Oh, my. Yeah. You guys are, you guys are ferocious. I'm, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, but it wasn't coming out and running, like, like gangbusters yeah. and like just going through the person like I wasn't like Schumacher I yeah. I like you know it was more actually slowing down forcing them to make like make a move and then going down after they take a long touch and clipping them and that's yeah. usually where I get like you know you're you're light on your feet you come you close the space you're in a good distance you know and it's just a slight movement they try to the only thing they can do that one is try to slide it by you with a shot or two try to take a long touch. You're inviting the long touch. Come on, try to beat me with a long touch. And this is really quick. This happens fast. Try to beat me with the long touch. That long touch should be yours. Sometimes I've missed it and sometimes I've gotten first. No. Yeah. So I'm just and, being and, honest. <laughs> well, look, I mean, it is part of, it is part of the game. Um, and speaking of, uh, of coming, in, coming out at the player, um, one of the things I want to discuss is kind of turning into that shot. Because I think this is this is a big issue with a lot of a lot of youth keepers. They come out for the ball, they make themselves big, and then when the shot is hit, they turn away from the shot rather than uh. in to the shot. And Mike, that's one of the reasons why. And when we're gonna go through your clips because I have them here. I'm gonna pull hey, an Omar. Is, is Carol your mom? Uh-oh. Carol is my mom. She's saying hi, mom. mom. <laughs> <laughs> hi, mom. That's <laughs> so cute. I love it. Sorry, I had to. Wait, wait. Can we pull some of Mike's? Should we pull some of Mike's clips right yeah, here so, let's so the see audience can see? Them. All right, so all right, yeah. so I'm going to share share the screen with everybody right here, so everyone can see. And now, all right, Mike, can you see? I can see. All right, fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to make this big. All right, here. look who's Omar now. I know. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm. Well, I'm trying. I'm trying at least. <laughs> I'm, expa- I'm exp- expanding. There we go. Okay. All right, Mike says, says, for this. where are these clips at? All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, dear. This is not you coming out. That is me That's about a throw. a throw ball. That was a good That's throw. That's a great though. throw. That's a good throw, dude. That was a good throw right there. Oh, here we go. Backing up, and now you're coming out. Fast approach, slow arrival, and look. See how you turned it to that shot right there? Let's look that again. Oh, my God. He's, he's working in. on his announcing skills. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. Look. Hold. Look at how big you are right there. Shot yeah, cuts heads hit. Oh, see? He's got look at that. Him. Shots hit. You st- and see how you turned right into that shot right there? That's exactly what I'm talking about. And so many young youth goalkeepers, what they do instead is they turn, they turn, turn away. away from that. They turn away from that, and they expose that gap. My, do you think that's a fear thing, Mike, or do you think that's something that just young goalkeepers are not taught? Um, I think it's definitely a fear thing. Uh, I think it's your, um, I don't know, it's, it's natural to want to turn away from something that's about to hurt you, I guess. Um, and, you know, getting hit in the face with a, with a ball coming <laughs> off a striker's foot is not, is not fun. And I've been there before and I've been hit in other places too that have hurt um, quite a bit. So it would naturally make you want to turn away from the ball. But I think, um, you know, once you do it enough and you understand it's not going to kill you, um, then you kind of get over that fear. And I, no doubt there's still times today in training, maybe I'll turn away. And I'll give it a half ass kind of thing. Sorry for cursing. Um, no, that, but, that, uh, no, that is not. But that is, by the way, the, the worst cursing we've ever had on this show was, was Franz Hook. And he did not, he did not apologize <laughs> in any way whatsoever. <laughs> He's like, this is the game, this is it, this is it is. It is what it is. But sometimes if I give up on a ball or something in training and I turn away, like, 
yeah, I shouldn't do it, but sometimes I still do it. Um, so but I think it's a bravery thing. I think it's getting over that. I saw I saw a really good clip on YouTube about a, a trainer used, um, you know, squishy balls, um, something that wasn't going to hurt the goalkeeper uh, mm -hmm. if they were to get hit in the face or something like that. And it was just a like repetition with the squishy ball. And then all of a sudden, when the real ball is thrown in there, they're using the same form, the right the right technique, and things like that. And I think that was a good progression uh, from that coach. Dude, um, I love that. I love that. Yeah, yeah I want to see. I want to see that. That's one. That's that's something I would I'll love to, to try. Be, because that might be. A, yeah, that that works especially especially <laughs> with the really young ones. I think that that could just teach them at that moment. Oh my gosh, it's not that bad. And then as they progress and get older, then you start putting in the the, the big the big ball, you mm -hmm. know, or the the regular soccer ball. And then because they're so used to doing the movement, it's not a it's not a crazy thing anymore. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> People just threw stones at me. <laughs> <laughs> back, make, back, make in back in yeah, back in Jersey. They, they, went the opposite they just went the opposite direction. Let's just hit it with really hard things, and then the ball won't seem that bad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, let's let's talk about that, Sasuke, in regards to in regards to turning into the shot. And we were talking about how when you turn into the shot, obviously you're not exposing those gaps. Um, I want to talk about when you close space about how you want to come out and close that space. Because I see a lot of goalkeepers and they come out too small. They come out, they cover, they try to cut closing space, but they're still small. And because of that, everything is exposed. So it was kind of a waste of time. So how do well, you, you kind of work on that? You want to be, yes, you want to be big. You, you know, your whole point is to, that they don't have sight of the goal. Okay. It's just you and the player. So the whole point is that you're not showing them anything. They see nothing but you with your size, your presence, with your stance and everything. As far as turning into the ball, like from that you know, proper setting distance and a proper distance, like your distance, you, you're you not like, you should still be have your reaction on it. You shouldn't just be like, oh, I'm gonna go this way and the ball went that way and maybe my foot will get it. Like you should still train yourself to see the ball and, and, and go the right direction, use, you know, Michael did that. Michael went, he looked, and he made himself big, and he went the right way. Like, he didn't just turn away from the ball or anything. Like, See, now look at this. You know, this and you, play get right a lot of kid, you get a lot of kids that just, they just go one way. Yeah. See, and, and Mike, and, I, and, and whether that's fear or whether it's just, it's once you're in that, like you said, um, sometimes kids close that space and they think, well, I've done my job. And no, your job's not over yet. You know, you're still, you still have the ability to, you know, to react to whatever shot. And sometimes you go and the next thing you know, he didn't shoot. Yeah. See, now look at this right here. So again, and this is awesome that we can use Mike as an example right here, since he's literally right here. But <laughs> as, and I, I'll slow that one down a little bit here. So we go, we'll go back a little bit here and right here. See, as, as he, as he's approaching right here, he's yeah, and the see, sprinter. But kids, yeah. see how, this is my point, see how he's already started to close this space before this ball even gets to the foot, okay? So during this pass, you can't see what I'm pointing at, but during the pass in, the pass into the box, he's already started to close the space. So by the time yep. the player, I don't know who that player is, but by the time that player gets the ball and, and has a chance to do anything with it, that gap is this big. Yeah, I'm, sure Mike, of, I'm sure Mike knows who that player is. But instead of yeah, Bundu, what, what a lot player. of what a lot of people wait for. So Bundu has nothing. He's got nothing, okay. Because but what a lot of young kids wait for is for that Bundu to get that pass and then try to move, and then you're yep. done. Yeah. So that's my point about closing that space while that ball is in no man's land. While that ball is traveling is when that space should be closed. And, th and then I think uh, also reading just kind of like how big that touch is too. Like that's so, so, so important. I mean, I see so many young keepers, they approach a ball that's close to the foot of the player as yeah, if the done. player just took a big touch and you're done because they're, they're going to have the control. That's what the player wants you to do. Exactly. Exactly. Michael, I want, I want to talk about this here a bit too because like as we're looking at this little one right there, again, you kept yourself big. As that ball's coming in, you turned into the shot. One problem I see a lot of times, and I don't know if you've, you've noticed this with a lot of keepers, is that when they do overstep and they're too close 
to the player before they strike. Well, now what they've done is they've just exposed that area Low. right directly mm -hmm. underneath them, below them, right? So mm -hmm. what, what do you think is kind of the good distance to stop and set before that player, before that player cranks up? Well, sometimes you're sliding through it. Like, I think here I kind of slide through it. Uh, I kind of had to just get a knee down quick, and it actually ends up being the wrong knee because if Bundu, if Bundu takes a touch a little bit further and I throw, I think it was my right knee down, then I'm kind of screwed because then I can't get back around to the right. But um, yeah. I think, you know, after looking at it, um, I think I was just reacting to his touch. Uh, so I just kind of tried to get a knee down. Um, yeah. but, uh, what was your question again? Well, my, my, my question was about what the distance, like, and, and I, by the way, I love the fact that you used meters cause that shows how long you've been in Denmark. Just, uh, yeah. the fact that you're like, ah, you know, about two meters distance. And I'm like, what is two meters distance? Six feet. Okay. Six feet, two meters yeah. is six feet. Um, but is there, is there a right distance or is it something you just kind of have to, you kind of have to gauge and kind of understand your own body? I think, I think, yeah, I think you have to gauge it and I think you have to know, um, oh, this is a good side volley though. Look at that uh, side volley. <laughs> Listen, Ederson here. He's like, I love these highlights. Yeah, he's like, where'd about you that. find these? Um, oh! oh. <laughs> he scores another one on me though. Um, but okay, about take to, it like, down, Mike. <laughs> I'm taking it down. I'm taking the stick. Okay. All right. I'm no taking more, it down. Uh, thank, thank you. Um, <laughs> But I think it, as soon as I see that the striker is about to hit the ball and I've closed the distance, that's when I'm going to go into like a spread or a block, you know, depending on where I am in the goal. If I'm in the middle of the goal, I'm not going to go into a block because they have so much room to shoot at. If, I'm, if I have the striker at a decent angle and he, has, he doesn't have that much of a goal to shoot at, you do want to be a little bit more compact um, because – they don't have that much of their goal to shoot at. So the only way they would be able to score is to go directly through you. Um, so if you don't have that knee down, they can shoot right under you. Um, and that's where I think like awareness of the game and, um, you know, knowing when to do what kind of technique comes in. And that comes through repetition and being in all these different scenarios over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just continually like learning what you need to do. Saskia, I know you were, you, you've been talking and you've, you've talked about this quite a bit on, on the show that a lot of your goalkeepers, they just spread no matter what in a situation like this. They, they come out and they spread no matter what. And right there, you can just see it from a professional goalkeeper. Not UCLA. Not, not UCLA. UCLA. Not UCLA. Not I'm, 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 I'm talking about young goalkeepers you've worked with. I'm talking not about the club, club goalkeepers in the, in the past. Um, and just right here, like, like we can talk about right here with, with, with Michael here or, or even talking about your, your higher level keepers at, at UCLA, it's not, it's not a black and white situation like that. You've got, to, you've got to figure out where's best for your body to go to cover the, to cover the most space, right? Yeah, I mean, and that comes from them watching and, and just trying to do it what other goal they see top goalkeepers doing it oh they spread so i spread but it, it's the understanding of the game when why 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 are you doing it in what scenarios why are you not doing it why are you going hands down for a 50 50 ball why you know are you coming out full tilt for a 70 30 ball and going down that you know you can beat the player to there's different scenarios for everything but these, you know a lot of these young kids they oh i'm gonna do the, the new k stance so i'm gonna do it and i'm eight yards away from the ball awesome <laughs> you know that's not stopping anything yeah. you know and let them do it and they'll learn and then i'll be like what are you doing <laughs> so but yeah you see that and that's from a lack of understanding it's a lack of it's from a lack of repetition um and like like michael said the more the more you see it the more you train it you're, it's timing, it's understanding the game. And it's not just understanding that last pass, it's everything building up to it. Um, where you are in the goal, like on the first on the first clip we watched, you know, Mike had to back up. Um, yeah. And that was the right time to back up. There are times that you get caught out and don't back up. Like, you know, if, if you get caught out sometimes you, and you don't have time to back up your best thing, sometimes go forward and and close close base instead of getting caught in no man's land but he had the time to back up reset 
giving that player that extra touch then still, you know, stole the ground. And, and that's the right thing to do. So there are different situations for everything, but the only way you're going to learn it is repetition, repetition. You can't come, your kids can't come in and being like, I saw this on TV. This is what I'm doing. I'm doing it all the time. It does, does not work that way. It doesn't. I, I want to bring that up because we obviously we have Michael right here and we just watched that that clip that you're bringing up in regards to that back pedal right there and, and on a boom bundu was, was his name? no that was the back pedal was uh, that the first was on one. that was on uh, Svensson on Svensson okay yeah. okay uh, on Svensson was uh was that that you literally was that a conscious decision on your part like you you came out and you recognized you were caught. So you backed up or was it just instinct? Was it just like an instinctual thing that you didn't even know you were doing? That was, um, I was already high on that play. Mm -hmm. We had possession of the ball and we gave away possession um, at, around the midfield line. Um, and as soon as he got it, he took a big touch uh, and he was gone. It was him versus me. Um, so at that point I knew I can't get to that first touch um, and I need to reset so he's got to start making some decisions. Right. Had um, he stayed. I'm... Oh, okay. yeah, exactly. Um, he stayed, he would have just, he would have chipped him. Exactly. Um, this is not a normal situation in a game, uh, per se. Like, we're not going to lose the ball at, at the midfield line with no defenders behind the ball. Um, it just it happened. Um, but I think as soon as he took that first big touch, then it was like, okay, I need to reset. Uh, and then he takes another big touch. Then I start gaining some more ground. I saw one of his players coming from uh, from my right. So I was like, okay, he could just slide that ball to him too. Um, and I was, I, could, I would have been shit out of luck if, if he did that. Um, I had two, I had two defenders recovering as well, but. Um, yeah, but you I, know, you know, in those situations, you you can. I, we have players that do that. Like they worry about that other player coming in on attack. It's not your problem. Mm -hmm. Like no, your no, problem, no. Yeah, your problem is you're not to blame. You did the right you're thing. not to blame. Exactly. exactly. You're not to blame yeah. if they slide that ball to to that other player and he slots it home. Not it's not your problem. Um, but you know, I'm I'm thinking about all these things in split seconds, and I'm like, it doesn't look like he's playing him that ball. And then I think I kind of stand tall, put my arm out to the right, like I'm going to kind of cut that off. And then I kind of uh, throw my body a little bit more to the left and he shoots to my left. Um, that being said, if he shoots to my right, I think my trail leg is going to take it. Um, so I kind of just try and make myself as big as I can. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to make myself as big as I can and, you know, um, stop the ball from going in yeah. the net, you know? Yeah. I I want to I want to talk about this because you know a lot of times a lot of young goalkeepers like do you think like for instance is it better like and l let me just use this example right here because I got another great example of yours right here I am becoming Omar I'm literally becoming Omar <laughs> and uh, and I love it I love I'm it so I love glad it but I love the fact that we have the goalkeeper who we're watching the highlights of here because we can actually remember how Franz was talking about how. You know, I don't know what they were thinking. So you can only break down so much because you don't, unless you talk to the goalkeeper, you really don't know. You really yeah. don't know. So, okay. So do you know this play right here, Mike? Yep. Okay. And swing ball, ball, ball comes in. See, now you come out, you cover, you cover ground, but you hold rather than keep going I forward. Because if you had come second, forward, yeah. but if you'd kept coming forward, he's got the entire back post exposed, right? Yep. Yeah. And this, well, and instead, that's, boom, look at that. But that's save. part of getting too close. That, yeah, and maybe there I got a little bit too close, but I thought no, I but had you kept coming, you, it, you, it would have been even, would, he probably would have just one time touched it and would have, that would have been awkward. Oh, See? The, yeah. I mean, exactly. this was also, this is not textbook. Like, this is a little bit awkward because it's mm -hmm. uh, within a one yard, you know. Uh, distance and I was coming full steam had to stop uh, oh another good side volley I think <laughs> <laughs> oh, another good oh, side this, volley is a, this is a good side volley this is a good side okay. volley let's see it okay okay, okay nice. let's see this. look scans the field oh oh but they didn't show the whole uh, thing oh what <laughs> oh my gosh That's whoever broke down your tape dude whoever bro yeah. whoever That's you're gonna have to question. talk to the comms department and find this out this game this game was the first game where keepers were allowed to flick the ball to their defender and the defender headed back. Yeah. 
So, and this was my first game in front of, I don't know what it was. It was like 12 or 13,000, uh, something like that. And my coach was like, we're going to love it. We're, we're going to make the fans so mad. And I'm just like, okay. So on every single goal kick, I was flicking the ball up to my defender. Um, <laughs> shout out Siever. He's in uh, Sweden now. Um, and he would head the ball back to me and I would, I would catch it. And then I would go up to the 18 and, and hit a side ball. Or something. <laughs> it was, it was ridiculous. But then That's after a- that game, they, they banned that rule again. Yeah. I don't remember just because because, it, because of that. you because of you. I think so. But I remember I think when so. people were doing that, and I was just like, "There, there's the, there's a little hitch in that whole idea." We took we took full, full advantage, advantage of it. Yeah. Full <laughs> advantage, and Bo, like how ma- Bo loved it. How many uh, how many plays did you guys uh, complete because of that because of that little maneuver? Um, we got the ball a lot further down the pitch. Um, actually, one of our goals came from that. So nice. Wow. It was uh, quite early in the game. Um, we had just done the flick in the head, and then I punted the ball down the field. Ball got headed on, crossed, finished. It's perfect. Um, Mike, you were talking about your knees and mm-hmm. about your knees going going down and and covering and covering that space. You know, I think one of the problems is a lot of young goalkeepers. If you tell them, and we we talk about this all the time, so it's Saskia's like number one number right. one thing is that young goalkeepers are literal. So oh what, what's a better way maybe to explain that to Uh-oh. a young goalkeeper so yeah, they don't just okay. fall on their knees? Yeah. Oh. And they said, Michael Lansing uh, said this. Oh, I don't know if I can break it down that far. Um, you're basically getting your knee down to the ground, uh, keeping your chest big, uh, keeping your arms spread, um, you're you're making it so that the striker can't put the ball through your legs. Um, you're not digging that knee into the ground. Um, you just kind of put it into that space um, so that that ball can't get through. Um, yeah, that's about as basic as I can. Yeah. I just I mean, kind of do. At, I just do. <laughs> I don't just know do. how no, to explain. I, and, 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 I, I, no, way. I know. It's different. Like young keepers and coaches, if you look at it this way, if you dig that, you're not putting weight on the knee. If you put weight, if you put your body weight on the knee, if you dig your knee into the ground, well, then you're stuck on the ground. And now if that ball hits you and it pounces off somewhere, now you've got to get up from that position with your knees on the ground and go. What Michael's, Mike is saying is that you're putting the knee, bending it low enough so it's almost on the ground. So he has still, he's still got his strength in his, in his legs and his body so he can react, get up and move after the ball deflects off him. So, so, so Saskia, is that, what do you think one of the reasons, one of the mistakes that a lot, of, a lot of young goalkeeper coaches make is they'll just say like, hey, put your, knee, put your knees towards the ball. And so the players just do that and then they, I, don't, I, they don't correct I, them? I would hope not. Okay. <laughs> well, if, I think if, oh, go ahead, Sas. Yeah, I mean, I think, like I said, kids are very literal. And so you've got to really show that, that you've got to explain it to them. You've got, you've got, and it's trial and error. If they're putting their knee into the ground and their weight on the knee and not able to get up for a rebound, like there's, there's going to show you why you don't do that. And so you've got to kind of work through it. And if you're not explaining it properly or demoing it properly, then, you know, then that's on the coach. Yeah. Especially the young kids. And mm-hmm. I think it's just, it's the language you use too, right? It's the language you use that's, that's going, it's not just the demonstration, but as you're doing the demonstration, you have to make the language clear enough so that all, all, the, all the kids understand it. Yeah, I don't demo. I can't, if I put my knee that low, I'm not getting back up. <laughs> <laughs> too old. Well, when you have one of the kids that can't demo. <laughs> I think, like, oh, okay. My knee will go on the ground. <laughs> but I think, I think as a coach, if you have all the info in your head, you have to be able to portray that yeah. uh, in the right manner to your players because mm-hmm. with all that info in your head and not being able to translate it to your players, I think that's a huge, um, yeah. that's a huge burden. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're not going to learn what you have in your head. Um, but like Sas was saying, it, you have to be able to explain it. You have to, you know, hopefully be able to demo it. If not, then, <laughs> then, then maybe show them clips of what they're doing, 
clip, <laughs> clips of what they're doing, clips of what um, you know the professionals are doing, um, and kind of show them the difference. You know, there's a lot of steps you can do instead of just using yeah, your own I'm, words. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what about the the fear factor? I know you talked about the using using the little ball. Is there are there any mental mental tricks that you you used when you were growing up to to kind of remove any sort of doubt in your head when you were attacking a ball? Mm, I know Sauce no. never had to do that. She she just went full out since as a little kid. <laughs> I just learned one. Oh. I don't know if Sasha was just talking. No, I said I was just crazy. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I think there's little things I think about now, like just kind of, you know, like I'm a savage or like, um, you know, it's something yeah. to make me feel a little like, you know, I want to say F you, but like, you <laughs> yeah. know, you ha in that, in those kind of moments, you have to be, you know, this is my goal. I'm protecting it. I think I heard, um, I forget his name. Uh, it's the North and and I and Northern Ireland GK. Oh, My Michael Doherty. We had him on the show. Michael, yeah, amazing guy, uh, yeah. amazing story. Uh, I feel really bad that I just forgot his name, but I just blew uh, a little. You know, I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, okay. <laughs> but anyways, his his kind of um, way of thinking about um, you know protecting his goal is before matches he would put in his glove bag a picture of i think it was his i don't want it's not his parents it was like his wife and his kid or something like that he would put it in his glove bag put the glove bag in the goal and then say i'm going to protect this goal like weird little thing but it was kind of cool cuz then i started trying it i was like wow this is this is something like he's on to something here um, <laughs> because then you kind of you don't you don't give up on any balls you i mean i don't want to say it's I just a way to put balls, you in a mental state no but like, exactly. i love i love that because exactly. it's, it's also something you care about too so like if you just do something simple like that like me personally i would probably put like i don't know all my podcast equipment in the goal and like I need to okay. make sure I need to protect we're, that. We're, right? we're a bit far apart on that one. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think, I think of like my parents in the back of the goal. And I'm like, I can't let any of these balls hit them kind of thing. Like, um, I, I don't know. I should have probably chosen them. Chosen them. <laughs> but in, uh, in one V ones, it's just, it's really about getting over the fear. And uh, mm. I mean, obviously also a, combination of technique and awareness and reading the game and timing so there's just there's a ton of things that go into it but yeah and you know i tell a lot of kids when they turn when you're when you're scared is when you're gonna get hurt. and mm -hmm. we all know that when you turn and when you kind of flinch away from the ball all of those things like if your head like if your head into the ball hands into the ball ready to react ready to do something part of that is protecting yourself as well, then you're, you're going to be okay. The closer, you know, if you're in the right distance, you know, the ball's not going to hurt as bad. These are, these are the things I tell kids. Um, but when you do flinch, when you do turn away, when you kind of are like this, is when the ball does strange things. When it will hit you in the face, you don't see it coming and everything. And look, we've all been hit in the face, trust me and everything like that, but I'd rather be in control of my body and what I'm doing and head in and face into the ball, and like energy and my body weight forward than ducking and moving and just getting like blindsided or uppercut from the ball. You take a ball off the face though, and the ball goes out of bounds or something, it's a one nil game, you know, you stayed big, um, you know, you just saved a goal, you're you the hero, you know what I mean? Yeah, you and, shake it and you don't fear it. You know, you, you don't, don't feel, feel it. it. It's true. No. Um, I, I literally have saves that I don't remember. Like, I don't remember because, like, they happened so fast and they went, like, right off my head or something like that. And people are like, what a save. And I'm like, literally, I was just there. I was literally <laughs> there. I didn't do anything whatsoever. Like, any, any, anything could have, uh, could have stopped that whatsoever. By the way, uh, your mom is very happy that she's in the back of the goal. There, Mike. <laughs> right on, Carol. <laughs> um, and also Eric Klonofsky, another another New Jersey, New Jersey GK. He says Lansing, absolute legend. Legend. Exclamation <laughs> point. You're a legend, dude. That's we only guy. have New Jersey I legends on the show. <laughs> he's a he's a fantastic guy to go to for any um, you know 
goalkeeper insight. He's super uh, articulate about, you know, everything that he explains. And um, I've had this conversation with him before too. Like when he discusses goalkeeping or any situational uh, things, even like awareness of his career and stuff like that, he's super articulate and has, you know, everything at the tip of his tongue. So he's, uh, he's a good goalkeeper guy to go to. And he's got some stories. He's got some stories from Israel, man. He's got some of those yeah. stories from Israel. Those are, uh, those are pretty legendary. Um, I want to, I want to talk about this as we start wrapping up right here. Um, is first off is we talked about, you know, not instead of coming out, getting set, right. Just, you know, coming forward and just holding your ground, holding your ground. Um, if you think, if you had to choose between coming out and overstepping or staying and getting set, what would you, what would you kind of choose? Or is it kind of all situational? I would say situational. I mean, we've had this discussion on our team as well. Like there's some, there's some goalkeepers that will just stay and then a striker will shoot and score. And then, you know, commentators will say, Oh, nothing he could do. Or, you know, the fans would say, oh, it wasn't his fault or something like this. Um, whereas then you have a goalkeeper who really comes at the ball. He's using the right technique and stuff, gets beat. And then, you know, commentators say, oh, he could have made him done better here or something like that. It's like, what do you want? Um, but I'd rather be a little more proactive than, you know, uh, kind of in the safety of my own net. Um, I think being proactive is a little bit better. Absolutely. absolutely no absolutely and um i think even if you make the decision even if you come late like and you come like it's it's better to be oh, franz is gonna hate this word it's better to be set than moving number one yeah. so it's because that'll give you an opportunity i don't mean to jump into the set franz relax I mean, it's better to be under the I can't we I can't wait to read this book. I can't <laughs> wait to. It's better. So, Mike, Fr Franz is talking about not setting. He's saying, he's like, but, no, you should. But he's talking about, well, we won't get into it. Well, yeah, we don't got to do it. Yeah. Okay, so he basically, I, I agree. I'd rather be proactive. I'm not going to, um, if I have a chance to, to steal some space, um, to close some angle, um, and then um, get set, and then be ready for a shot or then make myself big. I'd rather do that than hold my line and try to defend that much space. Um, you know, and there's, there are those moments there are, even when you saw the clips of you and it, it, that it was a quick ball right in, right? So you're talking yep. to the top of the six, that's super fast. If you had stayed and not come, then odds are that ball is in the back of the net. If you had held your own. but because you close that fast and that little bit of space, what like a yard and a half, two yards, it's a save. And I would like I, I totally agree with you. I'd rather be more proactive and steal some ground if I can. See, I that that's that's the thing that I think a lot of young goalkeepers need to understand is that when we say cl coming out or closing space, th th it's again the literal the literalization again, right? Coming out, okay, I'm out all the way out. No. Okay. Coming out, closing space means, you know, a varying degree. You reading mm -hmm. the game and you recognizing how much ground to cover mm -hmm. as opposed to covering all of the ground, you know, only a little bit. Like we even saw Mike in that one clip. You only took one step forward and That's covered a I'm little saying. bit of ground. Yeah. But, and, but that makes a difference. Had he, I believe if you would have stayed, I'd like to think you would have stayed the ball anyway, but that's the difference between just staying on the line and then, okay, now I'm going to try to make the save, but you took that one split second to just close that space and close that space just, it can mean a foot, it can mean a yard, it can mean five yards, but you close the space that the situation gave you time to do and you make the save because that just makes the goal that much smaller. Sure. Yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. Um, Mike, last thing kind of before we, as we start wrapping this up right here um, is when a lot, there's a bit, been a big debate about this, about when you actually get into a big shape, get into a, a nice solid compact shape or spread shape or whatever in the shot. Some, some keeper coaches teach, you know, sprinter stance and you sprint all the way until that final step. And then, and then you make yourself. Some say, you take first step is a sprinter stance and then you open up like in your opinion, what works best? Um, well, again, situational. Um, I think like this goes back to this Twitter, uh, uh, thread. 
that I was reading. Um, like when, <clears throat> when the ball is in your 18, let's say, and straight on the goal, you're going to want to make yourself as big as you can. So that's more of like you're closing the space and then you're doing the K save, let's say. Um, when the ball's on an angle, you have less space to cover, then you're going to go into more of a block save. Um, and you're not sprinting into a block save. You're taking gradual ground, and then you're going to close that space and uh, go into a block. But um, sprinting into a K, you know, if the, if the striker takes a touch and then puts his head down, I'm going to take the big, the big, uh, the big step in, into a K save or something. Um, I'm more of a, a block save kind of guy than a K save kind of guy, but, um, but you know, it's, I think it's very situational. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think one of the real, the great, you know, themes that we're seeing in today's episode, and I want a lot, a lot of the young, young players out there who are listening to this to, to hear this is situational, situational, situational. Mm -hmm. There is no black and white. We can't give you the answer. And ultimately, when you're in the game, it's up to you to decide what's going to work for what work for you. Personally, I agree with with you two right here. I don't care for going into a, a K or a spread unless the player has put their head down and it's literally an emergency save for me where I'm trying to cover as much space because once I go into that shape, there is no coming back from it. There is no, that's a huge, that. that's a huge that's, debate right now huge, as well. And that's a huge, um, and that's why I'm with Mike on this. Like I prefer not to, that you, once you commit to that, you're committed. Yeah. 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 Also you've seen there's, there's many, many keepers even right now that are, committing to these saves too early uh, mm -hmm. they're giving themselves up too early and that's a yeah. huge conversation right now i think in the goalkeeper world uh, is committing too early um, the striker maybe hasn't committed to a shot mm -hmm. they commit to a k save and then the the striker just chips them um, yeah. absolutely yeah. and there's no so timing yeah timing situational you're, you'll keep hearing it but yeah. um it's, it and comes with repetition. You don't want to sell yourself that soon. You just can't because, especially at that level, at your level. But number two, like, force that, force the, manipulate the situation. Force the striker to think about it. Not to mention, you know, the more you hold him up, the more your team's recovering. The more he is feeling the pressure that he has to do something quick, and that's when he's going to mess up. If you commit to a case save, you're just giving him a gift. Too soon, you're giving him a gift. Yeah. Or her. No, no. I mean, I, I think, you know, and the, and the, la the last thing I just want to add to that too is that if you, it's just like anything. If you're, if you're on your feet, you have a better chance to recover if something goes differently than you expected. If you go to ground, you've committed to ground and you better get the ball. You better get a piece on that ball because if you don't, you're in, you're in, you're in a difficult situation. So I'm always for the one as much as possible to trying to train young keepers to stay on their feet as much as possible, unless, unless the angle is such that they have, have to go to ground and, and drop in any sort of, in any sort of way. Um, all right, we'll, uh, we'll start wrapping up right here because uh, I know everyone's got busy days going on. It's probably what, like one in the morning over there, Mike? <laughs> it is almost 11. Almost 11. So not okay. too bad. Not too bad. Not too, not too bad. Um, before we go, uh, Mike, thanks for stuff for taking all the time. If there's anybody out there who kind of wants to know, um, you know, more about like what the, what the journey is like to, to go to Denmark, maybe there's a young goalkeeper who's, who's trying to go over to Scandinavia and they want to, you know, learn a little bit more about that experience or, you know, um, such a thing. Where's the best place for people to reach out to you on social media? Um, I would, I guess Instagram would be, would be the best. Um, we're going to plug me right here, I guess. Yeah, we're going to uh, plug you, dude. All right. Mr. Sidewall. Uh, Lansing underscore one. But here's the thing. I just had a kid reach out to me. Um, I think it was a couple weeks ago. No introduction. No, um, I don't know the guy. I don't know anything about him. And he just said, how do you know coaches in Denmark? And it was a kid from the States. Uh, I don't know. He was on some high school team or something. But, you know, tell me who you are. Um, you know, you're not going to go into a business meeting with, uh, hey, 
what kind of job can I get? You know, you have to be, I mean, I'm a, I'm a normal human being, but like, um, just be polite. Like, who are you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to come into your DMS or something and be like, Hey, what's, uh, what's this about or something? Yeah. Um, you know, you want a little introduction and yeah, I have no, no I problem, mean, uh, responding to stuff and, um, you know, dude, I feel like that should, I think that should be an episode to be honest with you, like proper social media etiquette. <laughs> it's proper, proper there, etiquette. There's so many, I think there's so many, uh, in the goalkeeper world that want to help other goalkeepers for sure. Um, but there's also a lot of professional athletes that, that would love to help younger guys. You know, we were younger guys, girls, sorry. Um, it's but okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, we've all been there. We all started at nothing. Uh, and worked our way up and you know we know we know how to get there so um, you know we want to help as much as we can I think as well yeah and I think that that's one of the reasons why we we love to you know have people like yourself on here to share you know to share a little bit of your expertise and 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 I and I think you know the great thing is too is that we want you people to understand that like we're all goalkeepers we're all part of the goalkeeping union and we all can learn from each other you know and um you know, and plus I need to know more about the Danish Superliga. I just, I'm trying to learn more about the Danish Superliga. Who, who were the players again? Uh, Bundu and... Uh, Bundu and uh, that was Svensson. And Svensson. Sander Svensson. We need to watch more. more. Da- There's a lot of Americans over there. We need to start watching more of that league, man. There's, yeah, a um, lot of guys in Hobro. Yeah, Hobro yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's Christian Kappas and Emmanuel Savi, right? Yep. Yep. Kappas is nice. There. Also, Savi yeah, is good too, but, but yeah. Kappas I'm impressed with. Yeah, and then there's Jonathan Amen, Joseph Samuel, man. Maybe yep, I knew more about a, the Danish Super League than I know. You got your third home. string, <laughs> third string. Yeah, oh, that's true. <laughs> um, I did that. That just like went yeah, right I through know. because I'm so like, used to. <laughs> I'm so used to seeing Hummel that like that didn't even phase me. Um, oh my gosh, you're right. Thir- I didn't even think about that. Third, the third string keeper in Hobro. Um, he's uh, he's an American as well. Maybe you want to oh. reach out to him. Nice. What's his yeah. name? Oh. I have to find it. Not gonna put you on the spot right there. We'll, <laughs> we'll edit that part uh, out. We'll edit that part out. <laughs> Same with I the N I G K I part. Oh, <laughs> uh, I feel bad. Oh my gosh, guys! All right, we'll start. I was on a up bunch here. of Zoom calls on him with him, <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So uh, remember, guys, contact at inside the eighteen. That's the number eighteen media dot com. If you have a guest suggestion or a topic suggestion at Saskia underscore Weber. If you want to reach out at goalkeeper podcast on all social media platforms, by the way, Michael, you were a guest suggestion from somebody and I'll have to, I'll have to find out who it was. And uh, that's how we made this happen. So again, guys, if you're trying to get people on the show, reach out, we will make it happen. Um, All right, guys, that's all the time on inside the 18. We are out later. (laughs) 